Hi, this is the fellow passenger and this video is about the EQing that I've found that I keep doing over and over again. So I've decided to make some presets and I'm going to help you do the same. So hopefully your music will sound a little bit more clear and polished while you are still making it. We're going to use EQ8 for this. So one thing you might have heard that it's generally a good idea to keep the uh, bass in mono and that is what we're going to do here by taking the first EQ, set that to mid side and then we set it to side rather than mid and then we take that and we turn that up a bit actually we can turn that up to well for the sake of this let's actually set it to 200 that is probably more lower mids and then we do a low cut there i'm going to make individual uh, eq8s for this and the reason why i do that is I just found it easier to have, oh, sorry, easier to get a bit of an overview of what is going on. The other thing uh, that I tend to do, I my music tends to be, when you look at the final EQ curve, that there is an emphasis on um, the bass and not as much emphasis in the highs. So another thing that I would like to do is to uh, set this to... Uh, mid side again mid side mode so we are just going to affect everything that's happening in the sides the other thing that i've noticed is that um so that's a high shelf and then we turn that up maybe maybe we just do it about 3 db we work a small nut oh sorry that was the frequency uh so we set that maybe we set that at 4000 and then we just set oh maybe 3000 even and then we just set the two decibel increase we work in small numbers here just to uh, adjust things i've also noticed that it's nicer that the lower end uh, sits in mono and then the further up the spectrum especially uh, smaller peripheral sounds are pushed out into the sides and then we just give them a little bit more clarity like this the next one is keeping this in stereo but around 200 hertz i have noticed that a lot of the mud that i get in my mixes are around 200 hertz and i think that's because a lot of the sounds that i use have an overlap there so you will get a great build up of frequencies well i do anyway so i'm going to do a 3 db cut set to that uh, and then we do another one where we do a low cut, uh, a sharp low cut, and we do that at maybe 25. Uh, and then we do uh, a high cut at um, at least by 20 because that's where most oh 20,000 because that's when most human hearing uh, that's how far it can actually reach so if you have things we can turn that down a little bit maybe because if you have things that happens uh, higher than that uh, that may take up some of your headroom uh, but you can't hear it anyway so let's just cut that out so we've got these now, um, put them in a group and then right at the end we take a limiter and I'm going to keep that at uh, minus uh, 0.3 decibel for now. So this is as described this is my basic setup it doesn't mean that this is a silver bullet that's going to work for every channel but then uh, you op open this as a starting point because i know that i will probably need to cut a little bit in the low mids i'll know that i'll need to cut out uh, the base from the sides i know that i need to um 
you know, like if there's going to be things happening below below human hearing or above human hearing, I know that I'm not going to need that. So I, gen I tend to drop these on each of my channels as I'm working through my track. And if I have a drum rack, I put it on every drum track. Um, and this one here where the low cut is, I tend to try to keep it at that for things that are meant to happen in the very low registers. Like it could be your kick, uh, your bass is probably sitting down there. For everything else, I just try to like hi-hats, snares, uh, things like f if you put them on each channel, then while you're listening to it, you start turning the frequency up on that channel uh, like that until you get to a point where you feel like, uh, it starts making a difference to the sound that you don't like because it's quite likely that there might be in some hi-hat samples and stuff there are low frequencies there that you don't necessarily hear but they are there taking up headroom uh, and again uh, this here around 200 hertz it's not necessarily always around 200 hertz uh, I know that I have some sounds where where the fundamental frequency sits there and it just absolutely kills that sound when I put it exactly there, so I need to adjust it, but it's just as a starting point. The next step is to then go into your user library, presets, um, audio effects. In here, you create a folder with your name, whatever you call it, and then you can create some subfolders where you can put this in. Let's just call this temp, and then we drag this in here. Uh, and then you add it as favorite because you will need to get to this all the time and then you can just reach it from, so if we add that as a favorite here, boom, if I go up here, um, what did we call it now? Yes, it's just called, called audio effects racks. So obviously call it something that you like. I hope that is going to help you making your music sound a little bit cleaner, uh, especially while you are wake, working on it because it can sort of kill inspiration if even if you have a good track, but it's just uh, doesn't have the right vibe because it's just all really muddy and things. Uh, so I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. See you soon.